Hi. So today we're going to be doing a quasi-lab style hard drive data recovery. We're going to be using a laminar flow bench as a clean room in order to open a drive and fix what's wrong with it. You're going to see everything from start to finish. I'm not going to edit it out or have some fast techno music playing where you can't see what we do. So hopefully you'll be able to learn from it. Now before we get to the video, I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the first shout out is to HDD Recovery Services on YouTube. I'm going to link to his channel below. He's been very, very helpful anytime we had a question with just any tip or trick or advice as we've been getting set up to do lab-style data recovery. I'm very, very sorry if I wind up sending you a lot of people who ask really annoying questions. I'm sorry, but I did want to give you credit, and I didn't realize until I started recording this that you're probably going to get a bunch of annoying questions now. But seriously, all credit where credit is due. Thank you very much for helping us. Secondly, Thank you very much to Jason, my employee, who's going to be doing this data recovery for actually being a good enough employee that I can trust him to just learn this stuff, pick out all the things to buy, and just figure it out on his own with limited help and resources. Just the amount of times I, that I've walked by here and I see that he's still here at 1130 with his head inside of hard drives figuring this stuff out. You're not going to find people like that very often. And as somebody who's hired dozens and dozens of people, I know good people when I see them. You just don't find people with that ability to self-learn and figure things out with that natural sense of curiosity about them. It's very rare to find that. And Jason's one of those people. He also has a, his own company where he sells little connectors, flux, and parts, very similar to our side business of selling parts. I'm going to link to that below. It's microsolderingsupply.com. If you need any type of small connectors or anything like that, you can find them there. Third, before we get to the video, thank you to all of you who have clicked on any one of those Amazon links below. We do get commissions every time you click one of those links, and that admittedly does add a little bit of motivation to do these types of pain-in-the-ass videos. So thank you very much to everybody who's made this possible, and that being said let's move on to the video yeah so today we got um this old very old toshiba hard drive this is an ide drive from a very old machine uh-huh so and this thing is when we got it it was making some weird noises but now it's um uh, barely doing anything so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and plug this into pc3000 and we'll see what it does when we plug it in Let me get the mic. Let's turn it up. All right, ready? All right, so when I turn this drive on. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll stop that. That's nasty. Yep. So that sound, if you heard it very clearly. That's not nice. What we can is not good at all. So... What actually happens here is with these older Toshiba drives, they've got fluid dynamic bearings in them. So um, as they age, the fluid gunks up and uh, it'll become very thick and crusty. So, and when it becomes thick and crusty, the, the, the bearing the, and the spindle, the bearing, the, sp the bearing and the spindle won't turn and, and therefore the platters won't spin and it'll jump around like it did there and it will make very nasty sounds. So I'm going to actually, I got this trick off of uh, HDD Recovery Services. Uh, he's been very helpful to us. Um, he, he showed us this trick where if you heat up the spindle uh, and you heat it up so that the bearings, uh, the, the, fluid in the, the fluid in the bearing starts to loosen up a bit, you can actually test if that is the issue with the drive because when you heat it up, it'll, it'll free the bearing up and allow it to spin a bit. So this thing actually, when we first got it, it actually blew in the fuse on the PCB because it, it was so seized that it drew so much current to trying to spin the motor um, that it blew the fuse. So Please don't try gonna, this at home. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hot air station and... Unless you are Jason, don't try this at home. Just to test our theory... We're going to begin heating up the spindle bearing a bit. Not too much. All right, you want to get hold the mic up here? <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go ahead. They've heated it for a little bit and turn it on. And you can hear now it's grinding a bit, but it is spinning. And if I try to see 
You can see if I tried to have this going. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. You can see it's initialized now in PC3000. It says it's ready. And so this drive is actually spinning now, barely. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Making some very nasty sounds at the same time. So, thing is, when it's making sounds like this, in order to get an image of the drive, if, if the bearing hadn't completely seized, you might be able to, to get away with just heating it. And, um just heating it to the point where it spins enough so that you can get a, a few files off but because we this bearing is basically completely seized at this point we're gonna have to swap the platters over to a new uh, donor drive in order to try to get it to uh, read so I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna take the PCB off the PCB. All right. Everybody has one of these at home, right? <laughs> so yeah, so I've got a, I've already opened this up to take a look inside actually, just to make sure that everything was okay before we did anything. Um, Cause this was, f but we've got a donor drive here and this donor drive's already been used and abused. So it's actually missing the heads in it currently cause we've taken the heads out for a swap. <laughs> How much have we stolen from that donor drive for other drives? <laughs> this poor donor drive. You can see, though, the bearings in this one. That's the main one. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. So, if I try to spin this, this spins pretty nicely. You can see. That's some nice spinning. Yep. So, the bearings in this one should be good. Just put that off to the side. And so, we're going to prep this. Move the top case. Actually, first thing we're going to do before we do that is I'm going to take the platters out of the donor drive so I can just swap them in real fast. So the thing with platter swaps is, number one, pretty much all drives these days are multiple platter. Um, usually at least three, three platters or so, if not two. So this is an older drive and this is already two platters. So the plat the reason the thing you have to be careful with when you do platter swaps is uh, the platter is going from one platter to the next one. So from platter zero to platter one, for example, um, there's it's there, there's an alignment to them basically. So it's like uh, the the in your car when you balance the wheels, you can't just change the balancing around, or you can't just change the tires around without balancing them again, rebalancing them. So it's the same thing here. You can't you can't uh, change you can't take one platter off without keeping the alignment of both of them because if you remove the alignment then when the data goes from one platter to the next uh, it will actually it, when it's misaligned it won't re it, the, the data will be mixed up and because there's no physical markings on here there's no way if you mess up the alignment that you'll be able to get it back together and so that's the one issue with um, platter swaps on modern drives is you have to keep the alignment on them how so, do you know when it's aligned? You, 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 I mean, if you can read data, that's it. So How do you know that you're aligning it properly? <laughs> oh, well, well we, we use scotch tape. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wait, so that, 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 that's really serious? Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Since this is a donor drive, I can just take the platters out like that. But in any other case, you'll see we won't Scotch tape? That. Yeah. Magic you tape. You didn't tell me that before we started recording. <laughs> do you have a better suggestion? But, but, but I mean, like with the with the amount of accuracy required to put a terabyte of data on something that small, scotch yeah. tape really does it. Uh, I mean, so far, yeah. The trick is you just have to keep the alignment. That's it.
All right. Scotch tape, he says. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first things first is loosen this up. Then we'll pop this open. And now we'll go ahead and take our head comb. So with the he when you remove the heads, you got to be careful not to let the, uh, I'll show you actually. All right, so with this one, we've got, let's see if we can see this at all. I saw it. Okay. Before. I yeah. saw it. You are? Alright. So you can see we, we're using the head comb to separate the heads. Because the heads will naturally try to attach themselves to each other, actually. Let me show you. Because they're magnetic? Yeah, exactly. And the tension in, on there also. Need to find a place to put this. Let's see. I can zoom on whatever you're doing there if you ask. Okay. So if you remove the heads without a head comb, you'll end up with this issue which is, you can see the heads have all, are all touching each other now. If you, if you look very closely between right. the two of them. There's that and... Yeah, see, okay. so me, the, the black thing's in there. I put them together so I can get a nice picture. Okay. Like that. Okay, so the white thing is the head comb? The white thing's the head comb, and if you can see the black uh, parts there mm -hmm. on each head, those are the sliders that allow the, the heads to float over the surface of the platters. That is cool. Yeah. So when these sliders touch together, because it is magnetic and because of the tension of them, it'll uh, cause them to stick together. And if you try to pull it apart, you'll rip the sliders off of the heads and ruin the heads that way. So we use a head comb, this little white tool, to separate the, uh, the sliders and the heads and we remove it from the ramp. What so. happens if you don't use the head comb? Can you ever get them to not touch again? Or? Uh, it's very tricky. You, 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 there's a high risk that you damage the heads. So what's the head comb made of? Scotch tape? Styrofoam? <laughs> uh, it depends. I think these ones are made of some special um, CNC'd plastic of some sort. Okay, I'll put this away. I'll put these both away. So yeah, we're taking our head comb, and we're going to slide it in between the heads. Just like that. This looks like a nightmare. Now remove the top magnet. And you're sure you don't want to do this on live stream? I'm very sure. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the top magnet. Now we can remove the head brake. And once that's all done, make sure our head comb is positioned correctly.
Move the heads off the ramp. And now begin the process of extracting the heads. There we go. Okay, so there we go. There's our head assembly, take a quick look. Ideally, you look under the microscope. But these heads should be fine. We're working on that. Yeah. Work in progress, work <laughs> in progress. Okay, so now we can take a look at our platters. So if you remember how the other one spun, see how this one spins. Very, very, very uneasily. So I can barely get this thing to move at all when I try to spin it. So this bearing is very much seized. So what we're going to the liquid drying up. Yeah, the fluid in the in the bearing uh, drying up. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these platters and move it into this assembly, which hopefully will have a good bearing. And before we do that, just double check one thing: make sure our filter is clean. This is a good way to check if you have media damage or platter damage or bad heads, because that'll get dirty from the head scratching the surface, if that's the case. All right. So. Okay. So now, we're going to prep our scotch tape. So for this, we've got magic finish. And we're going to take off a clean piece. So the platter is where all the data is, right? Yep. All 80 gigs. All 80 gigabytes. <laughs> Actually, first we're going to take off the ramp. Before we do that. Okay. All right. So where do you find an IDE drive to swap this with? <laughs> Uh, the eBay, if you're lucky. You mean Toshiba doesn't stockpile these and just send them to people who ask for them? <laughs> I wish. I don't think Toshiba is even owned by the same company who built this drive anymore. So what we're going to do is we're using the scotch tape around the edges of the platter. And so I've taped the, the edges of the platter together. You can't tape it to the surface, of course, because that will ruin the surface and it has no effect. So by taping it to the edges, what we can do is use uh, the tape to hold the alignment of the platter so that we can extract the two platters together as one piece. How many pieces of scotch tape does this take? Usually two. You don't think you can get by with one? <laughs> I'm not going to risk it. I've got two hands. You should conserve tape. I mean, <laughs> stuff's expensive. Well, let's see. Just make sure this is in there firmly. You think we can get magic tape as a sponsor? <laughs> Thank you. 
The tape of choice of data recovery experts everywhere. All right, so that one actually didn't go to, let's see. How did that take? Yeah, I'm gonna wanna redo that one. Same thing on the other side. So we're going to take our donor drive now, and we will loosen up spindle. Okay. And the fun part. No pressure. Just like that. Make sure it's on there even. So you see I took it off as one piece. And... What's that piece? That's the thing that keeps the platter on the drive? Yeah. Just some sort, it's like a nut basically. So now, oh. okay. And now we're going to make sure this spins straight. tape and let's see do our platters now spin look at that pretty yeah nice that's beautiful little platter so it's now ready to be plugged back in now, right? Yep. Just kidding. Um, no, now we have to reassemble everything. So, ramp. See, I told you scotch tape worked. What if I told you hypothetically that this was not being recorded but live streamed at this very minute? <laughs> <laughs> it's your business. <laughs> I hear, I always hear Sonny's hiring, so <coughs> and Jessa. <laughs> this friend. Yeah. Okay. Put the heads back in. Hand cramp. Okay.
Okay, very carefully. Move the heads back onto the ramp like that. Okay, and now the less fun part. that yeah. okay so now make sure the brake works There's a gasket that this goes into that if it's not aligned correctly will not allow the contacts to sit in there. There we go. And now we can screw that in. Extract their head comb. There. And just like that. Looks just about done. Yep. Make sure you're the right way this goes. See what this is being opened in. That this is an air science laminar flow cabinet, and that there is a hole in the wall that we covered with tape. With the <laughs> mouse from Atomic Wings would stop coming into our store. This is supposed to be a clean room, man. This is a clean room. That's what the tape is there for. <laughs> the, the tape has been unpenetrated for the year and a half since I put it there. Look at that. I love to see the video of the mouse running into it like a bird. <laughs> no, but this is actually a little, this is a clean room. It is oh, actually very clean. Laminar flow cabinet. Look at that. It's calibrated and everything. We. If I didn't value data privacy, we would have let the mouse come in. <laughs> Note to new business owners, don't open up your data recovery facility next to a chicken wing place. <laughs> we have a candy store to the left and a chicken wing place to the right, so it's like when the mouse gets, you know, when the mouse is going to get his dessert in between getting eating his chicken wings, it's like, what, what the fuck am I doing here? Okay, so there we go, drives back together. 
All right, it's another fun part. Does it actually work? Yep. If it doesn't work, this is a Sony drive, <laughs> and he'll be the one who's selling the GTFO. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's for Sony, so yeah. it doesn't matter, right? Exactly. That, that's me. Screw the PCB on. Oops. Okay. So if this doesn't work, we upload it to Jess's channel, right? <laughs> exactly. iPad rehab data recovery? Exactly. <laughs> Photoshop uh, Mark's face over mine. <laughs> Use that program to change your voice a little bit? Yeah. I think I can make you sound like you're from Florida. Okay. So plugging it back into PC3000. And let me get the microphone. All right. So if you remember... It's up. Okay. So remember, this is making nasty sounds, but now, if my mouse reacts, all right, I'm going to turn this on, and, oop, nothing, and you see we've got a ready status, right there in the corner, says DRD, ready, so, auto detect, run utility, start, and, ooh. You can see the serial, the firmware, model. Let me see where you, where you see the serial. So it says serial up here. Firmware capacity, we're getting 80 gigs. Four heads in action. And it seems to be okay. So, no clicking, nothing, no grinding. It's definitely spinning. Yep. Can you, can you see if we can get a file? Yeah, let's first see if we can get access move, to... Move the camera out of the way in case there's any, anything that we don't want people to see there. Yeah. Data privacy, data privacy. So we're going to read the first sector first. Okay, first sector. And if we can read the last sector, theoretically, we should have access to everything in between. So there's the last sector. So now we can go ahead and minimize this and start up data extractor. Create a new task. Source is going to be IDE. If I were smart, I'd be de o open <laughs> broadcasting that screen, but this is fine. Make data copy. Destination, I've got a drive plugged into channel zero. Start. And, yep, there we go. First thing is going to be build a head map. Build head map. So what the head map lets me do is control individual heads. And you can see, well, that was fast. So I can turn off head, uh, any of these heads one by one. Um, say, for example, if head two is reading poorly, I can turn that off so I can get a clone of the other three heads. And now we'll go ahead and launch Explorer. All right, let me just turn, cover the camera. So that we <laughs> you know, they can see in it. In case there's porn. <laughs> or, or, or so you can see I've got a partition map here. Let's see the partition map. Don't click on the data in case there's <laughs> sunnies. You can see an HFS partition. All right. And... And we'll see if we can get the files in, in there. Now, is there any data that's not... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, can we go to... Uh, <laughs> another kid. That's what editing's for. Let's see. Well, basically, you can see we've got all our data here. And now if I can I can go ahead and... So let's, so let's see. So what do we have for data? Whole bunch of folders. Yeah. Everything Mac, there. Random Mac crap. Full structure. Tabs. Yeah. And yeah, so you still point... So you did it. Yep, and now we can even start to clone the drive if we wanted to do that. And you can see we're reading pretty good, all good blocks. How fast is that reading? This is reading about 20 megs a second. It's a little slow. That's the, the, for I think, IDE, that's sick. Yeah, I think head 2 is a little st stuck, but uh, yeah, let's okay. see if I turn off head 2. Sure, it'll be just fine. Yeah, look at that. See, now I can clone all the other heads. And we'll get back to head to later, and you can see we're reading at a pretty good 30 megs a second. Let's see, 30 megs, wow. Yep. When so was yeah. this drive made? 2004? <laughs> yeah, something like that. that I was, think before that. That was, that was blazing fast back then. Yeah. So there you go.
This is reading at the speed of a dead SSD. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so that's how we do it. So you did it, and it worked. Professionalism. Professional. <laughs> All right. So that's it. And as always, I hope you learned something.